is it true that walking burns more fat than running? And if so, which one is better for weight loss? Hi, my name is Dr. Savali Powell. I'm a professor in bariatric medicine, a clinical weight loss expert, and I'm also a registered nutritionist. Additionally, I've dealt with my own weight issues for many years, so I also understand weight loss from a personal level as well as a professional one. Today, I will discuss whether walking or running is better for weight loss. And to find the answer to this question, I will turn to the research. But first, let me just briefly explain how we burn fat and carbs running and walking. So those who regularly tune into my videos will have seen this chart taken from the Institute of Human Anatomy. It basically shows that the lower the intensity of exercise, meaning the lower your heart rate, like 72 shown in the red, the higher the fat burning during that exercise shown in the green. So something like gentle walking with a heart rate of 72 would burn more fat than carbohydrates. As you can see, it's 1.1 fat burn versus 0.3 kilocals per minute of carbs burned. Conversely, the higher the intensity of exercise or the higher the heart rate induced by the exercise or movement, like running, burns more carbohydrates than fat shown in the yellow. So you can see 11.1 carbs burned versus 4.2 kilocals of fat burned. However, if you look at the total amount of calories you burn per minute during these types of exercise, walking at the heart rate of 72, you burn about 1.4 calories per minute. However, if you look at how many calories you burn when you go for a run with a heart rate of 155, you're burning about 15.2 calories per minute. If you want more detailed explanation of this, then please go to my video on fat burning, which I did last month. So in lower intensity exercises, our bodies use fat as their main source of fuel, but we don't burn as many calories. When exercise intensity increases, more carbohydrates are used, but we use up a lot more calories. Although we primarily burn fat while walking, what really matters for weight loss is the total calories burned during the workout. For instance, in 30 minutes of walking at 5 kilometers an hour burns 187 calories, while running 30 minutes at 9 kilometers an hour burns 365 calories. So a 30 minute run at 9 kilometers an hour offers the same calorie burn is a one hour walk at seven kilometers an hour. In addition, you can see by this chart that walking faster burns even more calories than walking slower. Similarly, running faster burns even more calories than running slower. Therefore, the more effort you put in, the more calories you'll burn. So technically running burns more calories than walking for the same time period. But what does the research show about running versus walking in terms of weight loss? Well, a 2013 study from the National Runners and Walkers Health Study analyzed data from, from nearly 50,000 participants and followed them for 6.2 years to understand the relationship between exercise levels and weight loss. The study found that both running and walking led to weight loss, but running was significantly more effective. Runners experienced 90% greater weight loss compared to walkers when the same amount of energy was burned or expended. There were also gender differences where running was particularly effective for men overall and for women who started with the most weight to lose. However, for women in other weight categories, walking was nearly as effective as running. This is really interesting information, but what about long-term weight loss maintenance after this initial weight loss? Well, it appears that running consistently is more effective in preventing weight gain and maintaining weight loss than compared to walking. Walking can also help with weight maintenance, but the effects are generally less pronounced compared to running. So the study showed that both running and walking can lead to weight loss, but running is more effective. But the question is, why is running so much better? Well, number one, increased appetite regulation. Some studies suggest that running better regulates appetite than walking, potentially leading to less calorie consumption later on. For instance, running tends to increase the levels of PPY, a hormone that suppresses appetite. Studies have also shown intense aerobic exercises like running can decrease appetite by decreasing the hunger hormone renalin. This means that after running, you might feel less hungry compared to after walking. Number two, increased post-exercise effects. Running can lead to higher post-exercise oxygen consumption or EPOC, commonly known as the afterburn effect. This means your body continues to burn calories at a higher rate even after you finished running. While walking also increases your metabolism, the afterburn effect is less pronounced compared to running. I've done another video explaining this, so please go watch it for further details. Number three, you can burn more calories when you run because your body needs to create more force to propel yourself forward compared to walking. This increased force comes from your muscles working harder, 
which requires more energy. Running also involves a greater push-off force from your legs to lift your body off the ground and move forward quickly. This force is higher than the one used in walking, where your feet stay in contact with the ground for longer periods of time. Running also engages more muscle groups and requires them to work more intensely. For example, your leg muscles, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, and calves, and your core muscles are more actively involved in maintaining balance and speed. Because your muscles are working harder and more muscles are involved, your body burns more calories to supply necessary energy to the body. Running also involves higher impact forces when your feet hit the ground, which can lead to more energy being used to absorb these impacts and recover from them. So running appears to be more effective for weight loss than walking, not only because of its calorie burn, but because of epoch and appetite regulation. So what about the other health benefits? Does running also prevail over walking? Well, number one, well, if we look at the cardiovascular health benefits, both running and walking improve cardiovascular health, but running can lead to more significant improvements in a shorter amount of time due to its higher intensity. It's been shown that runners have a 38% lower risk of high blood pressure and a 71% lower risk of type 2 diabetes compared to walkers. Although walking also involves cardiovascular health, the benefits are slightly less compared to running. Number two, joint health. There is a common belief that running can damage joints, but the research actually indicates that moderate running does not increase the risk of osteoarthritis and may even strengthen joints. Research demonstrates that runners have stronger bones than people who walk for exercise. However, walking is gentler on the joints and is often recommended for individuals with joint issues or those who are new to exercise. Number three, mental health. Running can significantly reduce the symptoms of depression and anxiety to the release of endorphins and other chemicals. Walking also improves mental health, particularly when done in nature, but the effects are generally less intense compared to running. Running may be better than walking because it causes a more intense endorphin rush, often referred to as runner's high. Number four, time constraints. Running can be more time efficient for burning calories and achieving fitness goals. If you have a busy schedule, a shorter run can be just as effective as a longer walk. It can also enhance your speed and agility for other sports. Number five, increase longevity. According to a study, runners live three years longer on average than non-runners. Although I've mentioned several advantages of running over walking, there are also many risks associated with running. Running is a high impact vigorous exercise, so it has more potential for risk than walking. High impact workouts can put a lot of strain on your body compared to low impact exercises such as walking. Over time, running can lead to common overuse injuries like stress factors, IV friction syndrome, Achilles tendon, shin splints, blisters, muscle strain, knee pain, etc. Interestingly, walkers have approximately an injury risk of 1 to 5% while runners face a 20 to 70% chance of injury. So in spite of the fact that running burns more calories and can potentially be better for weight loss, there are also numerous reasons why many of us cannot run anymore, whether it's due to injuries or age or other reasons. So the question is, how do you get more out of your walking to increase calorie burn so you can lose as much weight as running? Well, number one, speed walking, which involves brisk walking at a pace which is generally three to five miles per hour or faster. Some power walkers can reach seven to 10 miles per hour. This helps elevate your heart rate and burn more calories than walking normally. Potentially, power walking can burn a similar amount of calories as running. For example, power walking at 4.5 miles an hour for one hour burns the same amount of calories as jogging at the same speed for one hour. If you're starting out, you can engage in speed training by trying to increase your speed for two minutes or so and then slowing back down. Number two, walking with a weighted vest can boost calorie burning. Choose a vest that's 5 to 10% of your body weight. And for weight loss and muscle toning, you can incorporate interval walking with a weighted vest. You can also try walking with light dumbbells in each hand. Incline walking can also help you burn as many calories as running. You can burn more calories walking on an incline than on a flat surface by finding a hilly area or using the incline setting on your treadmill. You can try increasing incline by 5, 10 or 15% at a time when incline walking. Number four, swinging your arms while walking can increase calorie burn 5 to 10%. This action can also help you walk faster and provide a workout for your upper body. 
Number five, water walking is a great low impact exercise that you can do in shallow water, the beach or in the pool. This water resistance increases the intensity of your walk while reducing the impact on your joints. Number six, walking with poles can also increase calorie burn by up to 30%, increasing your workout intensity and support good posture while walking. So it appears that by incorporating these strategies, you can take your walking to the next level and burn just as many calories as running. And there are also several advantages of walking as well. Walking is more accessible for most people, requiring less physical fitness and no special equipment. It's easier to incorporate in your daily activities, such as walking to work or taking a stall during your lunch hour. It is generally easy to start, even for those with mobility limitations. Walking can reduce cravings. After a 15-minute walk, studies have shown that individuals were less inclined to have cravings for chocolate and other sweet things. Number three, it can find joint pain. Research has shown that people who walk have less arthritis-related joint pain. Number four, it can reduce weight gain. This study found that regular walking reduces the impact of obesity-related genes by half in individuals who carry these genes. Number five, injury risk of walking is much less compared to running. So I come back to the original question. Is walking or running better for weight loss and health? Well, research indicates that those who consistently run may lose more weight because of the higher calorie burn per minute compared to walking. And the more calories you burn, the easier it becomes to create a calorie deficit and lose weight. This means that running can accelerate your weight loss journey. So for those who love to run, you can continue as long as your joints remain healthy. Incorporating heels and speed intervals with running can also be beneficial for extra calorie burn. You can also alternate between walking and running. Now, the best way to avoid injury while you're running is to start slowly and increase the distance and speed over time. It would be best if you could combine running with maybe strength training and stretching to reduce the risk of injury and muscle soreness as well. However, running for a full hour can be quite demanding and running may not be suitable for those who are just starting to work out or those with health problems. The high impact nature of running can stress the joints, particularly if you carry a lot of extra weight on you which is why brisk walking becomes a viable alternative. The key is to engage in regular exercise, whether it's walking or running. Remember, a 30-minute run may offer the same benefits as a one-hour brisk walk for calorie burn. If you're successfully losing weight with a walking program, then stick with it and aim to walk most days of the week. Walking is suitable for people of various fitness levels and can enhance cardiovascular health while increasing overall energy levels. To increase the intensity and calorie burn while walking, consider adding heels and speed walking intervals. Just keep in mind that to achieve your weight loss goals, you need to walk for a little faster, further, and a little longer than you would if you were going for a run. Ultimately, both walking and running have their own advantages, but the most important thing is to stay active. In order to get any benefit from a workout, it has to be one that you enjoy and will do daily. So if you prefer walking, then do it. At the end of the day, do what you love. But whatever you choose to do, remember, weight loss is only one of the many benefits of regular exercise. So in the debate between walking and money, I believe both forms of exercise are winners. Regardless of your choice, you will burn calories, lose weight, reduce stress, and benefit your overall health. I love to hear what you take away from these videos, so please be sure to comment. If you want my free weight loss guidebook, click on the link below. I have so many other resources that will complement this video and help you on your weight loss journey. But to really get the results you want, make sure you come back to watch next week's video. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, please like and subscribe for new videos every week and share it with anyone who might benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dr. Sabali Powell. See you next week.